Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you to this channel. In this video, I am sharing this sutta which is numbered discourses 8.54 uh, with Digha Janu and uh, the link to the discourse is given in the description, the link to the full discourse. Now this discourse is basically on householders, people like you and me, right, who, who are not, not monks, who live in a regular life with their responsibilities. So, uh, so uh, Digha Janu went up to the Buddha and asked him, Sir, we are lay people. We enjoy sensu sensual pleasures. We live at home with our children. We use sandalwood imported from Kasi. Kasi. We wear garlands, perfumes, makeups. We accept gold and money. May the Buddha please teach us the Dhamma in a way that leads us to our welfare and happiness. See, important thing understand here. Buddha's knowledge was for monks as well as householders. So Buddha had given a lot of guidelines, a lot of uh, 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 guidance to householders as well how they can live live their life so Buddha never said that okay my knowledge is only for monks only the monks can get liberated rest householders they have no Buddha appreciated householders they Buddha appreciated the structure of marriage so that's why one of the one of the fundamental the one of the five precepts is no sexual misconduct so there's a foundation of marriage the institution of family can be protected right so uh, in this particular sutta first buddha gave uh, buddha gave the four things that lead to the welfare and happiness in this life then he gave four inlets and outlets of wealth and then he gave the four uh, the the uh, things that lead to welfare and happiness in future lives so i'll cover all that you know i'll give you a gist of what is covered then you can de read a detailed sutta uh, to get more better understanding so so buddha said Four things lead to welfare and happiness of a gentleman in this life, right? What are the four? One is, first is accomplishment in initiative. Second, accomplishment in protection. Third is accomplishment in good friendship. And fourth is accomplishment in balanced finances. So, basically four things. Initiative, protection, good friendship, balanced finances, right? So, what are the four? So, what is the accomplishment in initiative? Buddha said, it's when a gentleman earns a living by means such as farming, trade, Raising cattle, archery, government service or one of the professions. That means any profession which is genuine, which is legal as per the laws of the land and which doesn't harm anyone else, right? He does that profession and Buddha says he understands how to go about these things in order to complete and organize the work. This is called. So basically he has the knowledge about what to do, how to go about it. So that is where our knowledge, whatever profession that, whatever vocation that we are in, our knowledge of that vocation has to be good, right? So that we can do our vocation. That's where our study and our all the professional training comes into picture, right? So that is the first thing, accomplishment in initiative, right? Second, accomplishment in protection. What is accomplishment in protection? Buddha says, it's when a gentleman owes legitimate wealth that he has earned by his own efforts and initiative, built up with his own hands, gathered by the sweat of the bro, he ensures it is guarded and protected, thinking, how can I prevent my wealth from being taken by rulers or bandits, consumed by fire, swept away by flood, or taken by unloved hears? This is called accomplish accomplishment in, in protection. So, uh, let us understand this with the in context of the present times, right? So, basically, the person, uh, first is accomplishment in initiative, that is, person's works at uh, whatever legal way, to earn the wealth. Second is he, he has some legitimate wealth, right? So Buddha here is pointing out that we should have some legitimate wealth. We should like not, you know, go learn, go from paycheck to paycheck, have some wealth, have some like a contingency or an emergency fund of like six months where if need be, the funds can be used and have them in a safe place. Do not let, let the funds just be here and there where they, it can be open to theft or something. You know, you can, if you have like jewelry, you can have it in a locker or if you have any investments, you can put it in like a, a, a proper bank. Uh, for example, so I've been a financial advisor and financial planner in my earlier part of the life. So do not go into these cooperative banks and all. Just do not put money in the get rich quick uh, schemes or something. Put it in a, in a nationalized good bank where your money is protected or you can invest in a good mutual fund where uh, or maybe a liquid mutual fund where the risk is low, right? Putting the money in the right places, then uh, then protect the investments, right? Invest them wisely and uh, have proper cyber security. That means today a lot of 
frauds and email frauds and lot of those things happen so pro protecting the protecting your bank account and everything maybe in credit cards you can have those limits set and lot of things right i'm just talking i'm not just in putting buddha's teachings in the today's context then uh, then uh, preventing by taken taken by unloved years that means preventing the your hard earned money to go into the unloved years so for that ensuring that you have a proper will in place so friends it is very very important for every one of us irrespective of our age to have a have a will in place where that the transmission of the you know the your money your wealth goes to who you want the money to go to right so having a it's a and it's a very easy thing to to create a will nowadays so you can just create go and create your will so all those things so that's the second thing third is what is the accomplishment in good friendship so buddha here says it's where the person resides in a town or village where where there are children youngsters old mature in conduct accomplished in faith ethics generosity and wisdom so basically living in a locality where people are good they are understanding they are wise right rather than living in maybe kind of shady places where people are doing all the immoral conduct and everything uh, choosing a place to live where people are good wise and and that is where the importance always is that when you choose a house you just don't choose a house to buy a house just by looking at the price or the price or the cost of the house you also look at the locality and all the other stuff and the people who are there right uh, so all those things also you you check right see who he associates with them converses and in, engages in discussion so basically he engages he, he so he is not a loner he just doesn't live only by himself he engages with the people in his community and he emulates the same kind of accomplishment in faith ethics generosity and wisdom right so he also emulates the same kind of virtues that his community has right so that is accomplishment in good friendship then what is accomplishment in balanced finances so this was something which is surprising that even at buddha at that time talked about the importance of balanced finances so i have been a financial advisor so uh, so i can speak a lot about this particular point but now we have to just in context of the sutta we are discussing so here buddha is actually saying that when a gentleman knowing his income and expenditure balances his finances being neither too extravagant nor too frugal so he thinks in this way my income will increase my exceed my expenditure not the reverse so and then buddha gives the analogy of it's like an appraiser or an apprentice who holding up the scales knows that it's low by this much or high by this much right so if you have a weighing machine weighing scale and you you know that okay this much the you see the weighing scale where it is going so similarly our income and expenditure we have to adjust right the income should always be slightly higher than the expenditure right so it's not that we become too frugal and then people label us as being you no know, a miser and it's also not that we have we have to be a too kind of a uh, extravagant where people start labeling us as a fig eater right so buddha said that balance has to be there and income has to be always more than the expenditure so person has to take care of that so that is being accomplished in finances so what are the four accomplishment in initiative what are the four things that lead to the welfare and happiness in this life accomplishment in initiative right earning money in a right way protection protecting your wealth uh, having the legitimate wealth from your own effort and protecting it wisely good friendship engaging conversing with people who are wise in your locality and balanced finances ensuring that your income is better than your expense and maintaining that balance now buddha talks about here four drains of wealth and four inlets of wealth so here buddha talks about that four ways your wealth can quickly drain out right what are the four ways womanizing right uh, uh, it's like doing you know extramarital affairs or going to prostitutes and all that's the first way your wealth will quickly drain second is drinking right you have seen you know uh, in our lives we see our fam uh, you know families around pe people around us where we see that drinking the habit of drinking can take away the money quickly you know people you know have to even sell their uh, houses for this bad habit so that's why no drinking is one of the key precepts one of the five precepts given by the buddha you can check my video on the five precepts if you are on the buddhist path then following the five precepts is a minimum right you uh, for a householder third is 
gambling any form of gambling and and this gambling extends to all the new form of gambling the online poker and online you know all these fantasy apps the cricket fantasy apps and all it extends to all those things so any form of gambling we should not do and having bad friends companions and associates so if you have bad companions bad friends they will take you into a bad direction even if even if you don't want to drink they will make you drink it's something what happens is that being in that energy in that company of bad friends they will make you gossip they will make you steal they will make you do the all the wrong things so very very important to be in the right company now even if the company is not good wherever you live in better to be alone than in a bad company right so buddha has given the the example of like uh, suppose there is a reservoir and there are four inlets and four drains and someone opens up the drains and closes off the inlets that money that you know rain cannot come in but the drains have been opened up so quickly the entire thing will be drained and four inlets of the wealth buddha again says the four inlets of the wealth no womanizing no drinking no gambling and having good friends so friends these things we need to remember do not womanize right just be content and loyal with one one partner second don't drink do not drink no alcohol right no alcohol even i'll say no smoking just find a way to come out of these bad habits right third is no do not gamble do not gamble right fourth is do not have bad friends look at having a company of good friends so these are four inlets outlets of wealth then buddha says what are the four things that lead to the wealth welfare and happiness in future lives so this life we have talked about the four accomplishment of initiative protection right and all these things we discussed and the inlets and outlets of wealth now what about the future lives right how you can ensure and householder can ensure about future lives so first is accomplishment of faith ethics generosity wisdom what is accomplishment in faith where the person has a faith in the realized one's awakening that the blessed one is perfected fully awakened buddha accomplished in accomplished in knowledge holy knower of the world supreme guide for those who wish to train teacher of gods and humans awakened blessed so that faith we need to have in buddha of that he is an awakened one supreme knower and a teacher second is accomplishment in ethics ethics means conduct that way that means person doesn't kill living creatures doesn't steal commit sexual misconduct lie or consume alcoholic drinks that cause negligence so basically observes five precepts right observes restraint in body mind and speech what is accomplishment in generosity where the gentleman lives at home rid of the stain of stinginess he is not stingy he is not miser he gives freely generosity open handed committed to charity loving to give and to share this is called accomplishment so i have made separate video a uh, three part series on buddha's teachings on giving which you can check on my channel buddha's teachings on, on giving part 1 part 2 part 3 there it's like all the teachings on giving i have covered that then accomplishment in wisdom it's when the gentleman is wise he has the wisdom of arising and passing away which is noble penetrative and leads to the complete end so his 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 view is right he knows about impermanence experientially he has this insight into the three marks of existence impermanence non self and suffering right and he it, which leads to complete end of suffering that is the accomplishment of wisdom so these are the four things that lead to the welfare and happiness of the person in the future lives right so this is uh, what we have discussed i hope this sutta was helpful to you in some way please do reflect on this and share your reflections and thoughts in the comment section um, also do read check out the complete sutta the link is there in the description uh, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye namo buddhaye